Ladies and gentlemen, when the morning star summoned you to this banquet, I realized that there were only two people qualified to introduce the great man we are honoring tonight. Either my humble self or that pearl among journalists, Mr. Wallace Cook, my great friend and star reporter. You said it. I want Mr. Cook himself to tell you the great feat he performed, not only for the Morning Star, but for mankind itself, in interesting our guest of honor in this great project. Twenty-seven halls of learning and culture. Twenty-seven arenas of art to be known as the Morning Star Temple. And for every dollar we contribute, our guest has pledged himself to give ten. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce to you a prince with a heart as big as his pocketbook. That fabulous and magnificent potentate of the Orient, the Sultan of Mazupan. Peace be unto you, my friends. Peace and the blessings of culture. I'm not going to have you arrested. I'm going to put you on the payroll as a janitor. Thank you, sir. And I always want you present in the local room where my reporters and Mr. Wallace Cook can drink you in constantly as a warning against fakes. Yes, sir. May I ask, ain't Mr. Cook a reporter anymore? I wouldn't like for him to lose his job. He was very nice to me. Mr. Cook is not going to be discharged, Your Majesty. For his own good and the good of the Morning Star, I am going to remove him from the land of the living. No, I tell you I'm innocent. I was just as fooled by old Black Joe as you were. I believed everything he said just as you did. Now, Oliver, either you cut out these fat-headed monkey shines of yours and let bygones be bygones, or I'm walking out of this fish trap right here and now. You're under contract to the star for five more years. You're not in a position to resign unless you wish to retire from journalistic efforts over that period. Oliver, you're not going to keep me pounding out obituaries for five years. Those are my plans, Mr. Cook. That's gratitude. I'm the best reporter you ever had. I've handed you a hundred scoops. It isn't fair, Oliver. It isn't human. Shut up! Oliver, I, uh, I don't like to say this, but the paper is going to rack and ruin with me hidden away in that water cooler. Look at this. What's that? Poor little working girl, doomed to death from radium poisoning. We've covered it. Covered it? You're getting old, Oliver. 
Look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six lines on Hazel Flag. A poor little kid with a few months to live at the outside. Doomed. Death staring her in the face. What does she feel? What does she think? Radium eating away her bones. Don't shout at me. Listen, Oliver, there's a story in this kid that ought to tear your heart out. Where is it? Why hasn't the star got it? I'll tell you. Because I'm stuck away in a water cooler on account of some whim of yours. Listen, Oliver, give me a chance, will you? So help me, may I drop dead, I'll redeem myself. I ought to be shot for what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that maybe you ain't the most tittering imbecile on earth. I'm thinking that maybe you've learned your lesson. Oliver, so help me. I'll be in Vermont by morning. I'll dig you up a story that'll make this town swoon. Here's my hand on it. I've been through an inferno. I haven't been able to enter a cafe for the past three weeks without the band playing Dixie. Well, that was a coincidence. I've given you my hand. Go on. Redeem yourself. Thanks. You won't regret it. If I don't come back with the biggest story you ever handled, you can put me back in short pants and make me marble at it. You through? Yep. You know this girl, Hazel Flag? Yep. Pretty girl, eh? Yep. Where is she now, in the hospital? Oh. Just walking around, eh? Laughing, carrying on, I suppose. Yep. What's your name, Coolidge? Nope. Well, if you aren't worn out talking, what is it? Bulls. Mr. Bull, my name's Cook. I'm from the New York Star. I'm uh, going to be filing a lot of stuff at your telegraph office here. I don't think you are. Well, who says? Paragon Watch Factory owns this town. They don't care to have any scandal printed. What they say goes. Better take the next train back. What kind of a fellow is this Dr. Downer? He won't talk to you. Nobody talks to you in this town, except me. Better go home. Well, if you don't mind, I'll... Uh... Take a little stroll and have a look at the sights first. Well, I wouldn't talk at all if I knew I was going to do it for nothing. Oh, pardon. I forgot I was in Vermont. Morning, sister. You in charge here? Yep. I've been wandering through your fascinating metropolis for an hour. Mind if I sit down here? Yep. I guess you misunderstood me. Nope. You know Hazel Flag? Yep. Any idea where I could find her this morning? You're a newspaper man from New York. How'd you guess that, sister? You was described to me. Will Bull can shoot his mouth off to you all he wants, but not me, nor anybody else in this town. This drugstore is run by the Paragon Watch Company, and they don't want any scandal among the New Yorkers snooping around. Okay, sister. How much do I owe you? Well, you've taken up my time. Thank you very much. I'm sorry that I've taken up so much of your time. Sorry. Dr. Downer in? Yep. Is that his office? Yep. Just tell him Mr. Cook would like to see him. Tell him yourself.
Dr. Donna? Yes? My name's Cook. I'm up here from New York. Sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. Nice day. Yep. Yep. What do you got, young man? Hives? No, no hives. A lot of hives going around. Miss George Nasher was took yesterday. You know her? Nope. Where did you say you were from? New York. I was wondering if you could tell me where I could find Hazel Flagg. You're from New York, eh? Yep. You know what I think, young fella? I think you're a newspaper man. I can smell him. I've always been able to smell him. Excuse me while I open the window. I'll tell you briefly what I think of newspaper men. The hand of God reaching down into the mire couldn't elevate one of them to the depths of degradation. Not by a million miles. I think you're being a little severe toward my profession. Not much, but just a little. Nothing of the sort. I am a fair-minded man, young fella. But when you've been robbed, swindled, cheated for 22 years out of a fortune, it's pardonable to formulate an opinion. From New York, huh? Yep. You don't happen to know of a newspaper called the Morning Star. You have the honor, Dr. Downer, of addressing that newspaper's most gifted representative. Moses in the mountains. You're from the Morning Star. Stay right where you are. Don't move. I'll show you something that'll freeze you. Listen, Doctor. I'm getting sick of this taffy pull. Where can I get hold of Hazel Flagg? Don't talk to me about Hazel Flagg. No, sirree. Here's the evidence. Now, I appeal to you as a man of learning, Dr. Donna. What is Miss Flagg's address? Don't waste my time, young fella. Here, read that. That's a copy of an essay I wrote. Read it. Go on. Tit for tat. Give me her address and I'll pour over these interesting documents all night. I entered this contest with a clean pair of hands. Who are the six greatest Americans? I named them and proved why, writing on one side of the paper. And what happened? Did I win the $10,000? No, sirree. Did I win the $5,000? Did they even try to save their face by giving me one of the smaller $1,000 prizes? Not that gang of chicken thieves. Here's what they gave me, read it. A check for one dollar. Young fella, for 22 years. I must I... ask you, Dr. Donner, to be reasonable. You can't harbor a grudge for 22 years. I'll harbor it till I die. Wait and see. The Morning Star had a chance to win my respect 22 years ago. They saw fit to swindle and belittle me. Very well. I'll prove to them before I die who the six great Americans are and who was entitled to the first prize. I could do better in darkest Africa. You know who got that $10,000? The editor's wife. That's who. You don't have to sit there looking so dramatic, Hazel, like Eliza crossing the ice. Well, I can't help feeling a little bad you couldn't either if you were going to die any minute. Well, you can stop giving yourself the airs of a dying swan. According to this last analysis I made, you ain't going to die. Unless you get run over or something. What? You heard me. I don't like to chew my cabbage twice. You think... You think I, I, I'm, I'm not going to die? You're fitter than a fiddle. And stop gawking at me or I'll cut myself. I've got to cry, Enoch. I can't help it. Come, come, come. This is no way to behave in a doctor's office. Besides, that soap will give you the darndest bellyache you ever had. Oh, Enoch, you saved my life. Oh, it was nothing. That first diagnosis I made was a mistake. I got so that I was seeing radium poisoning everywhere. I've been awfully brave, haven't I? Not to cry before. Please, Dad. Well, now that it's over, I don't mind telling you, Hazel, I felt kind of sorry for you. Sorry. I've been under a great strain. <coughs> you know, I don't know what I'm so happy about, Enoch. You, you sort of spoil my trip. What trip's that, Hazel? You know, I'm going to take that $200 you get for dying in Warsaw and go to New York and blow it all in and die happy, and now I've got to stay in Warsaw. So, that's your gratitude to me for snatching you from the jaws of death. 
You know, I don't know which I am, happy or miserable. I'm, I'm all mixed up. Enoch, listen, do you have to hand in that report to the factory? I know it sounds a little dishonest. I'd do it like a shot, Hazel. Only I'd lose my job the minute they found out you weren't going to die. And besides, there's the ethics. Well, well thanks for all your trouble. I'm, I'm terribly grateful, Enoch. Only it's kind of startling to be brought to life twice and each time in Warsaw. <laughs> Miss Flagg, pardon me, I'm Wallace Cook from the New York Star. I came up to see you. I know it's hard for you to talk, but if you just listen to me for a little while... I have while nothing I... to say now. It's sort of too late. I know how you feel, Miss Flagg, but I won't ask you any questions about your ailment. I was just in the sea, Dr. Dollar, and he told me... Oh, no, please don't cry. I was thinking while I was waiting for you to come out, and I got an idea. I want you to come to New York with me. What? As my guest, as the guest of the Morning Star. Now, don't say anything till I tell you. Oh, I'm not saying anything. If you were my sister, or somebody close to me, I'd take you out of Warsaw, dead or alive, Miss Flang. Oh, I've always wanted to see the world outside oh, that's before. tragic. You've lived here all your life. Let's wait that long. You poor kid. You've never been to New York. No, oh, my grandmother took me there when I was three, but I didn't appreciate it. Listen, we'll show you the town. We'll take you everywhere. You'll have more fun than if you lived a hundred years in this moth-eaten yep and no village. Oh, that's so very true. Is it a bargain? I don't know. It would be imposing on everybody because... Imposing? In what way? Oh, I just thought it'd be wrong to make people sad. It'd be kind of a killjoy, wouldn't it? Listen, I'll be frank with you. Even if I sound like a ghoul, you'll be a sensation. The whole town will take you to its heart. You'll have everything you've ever dreamed of, and you'll have it on a silver platter. You'll be like Aladdin with a magic lamp to rub. You mean they'll like me just because I'm dying? Oh, that's a cruel way to put it. No, they'll like you because you'll be a symbol of courage and heroism. Well, we'll talk about it on the plane. An airplane? You mean we're going to fly there? Sure, sure. We haven't much time. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, the, the sooner you get there, the more time you'll have to enjoy yourself. You know, I was going to go there before I saved up hundred dollars. And a hundred million dollars couldn't buy her the fun the morning star can give you. Come on. Oh, no, wait. I've got to take him with me. With the kid on the bicycle? Oh, no, no, Enoch. Dr. Donner, you wait here. Uh, oh, you won't go away with me? Nope. Well, I'll go ask him. Will you wait here? Yep. Oh, good. Ada! for scenery from this point of view. But that's the Statue of Liberty. A scenery. I got in touch with Oliver for Oliver Stone, my editor. He's toe dancing in the street waiting for us. Oh, I hope he's nice like you. Well, he's got a different quality of charm. He's sort of a cross between a Ferris wheel and a werewolf, but with a lovable streak, if you care to blast for it. You getting nervous? Oh, no, no. I just hope you won't have a lot of long-whiskered doctors lined up to harass me. You know, I'm not coming to New York to play guinea pig for a lot of scientists. Everybody knows that radium poisoning is incurable, so, so why waste any time in that direction? Don't you worry about that. You won't be bothered at all. You know, I'm not going to bed until I have convulsions and my teeth start falling out. That's when I begin worrying, isn't it, Enoch? This is as good a time as any. How are you feeling now, sailor? Hunky dory, Skipper. Well, there she is, in all her beads and ribbons. Mr. Cook? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's from Oliver. He's almost tongue-tied with excitement. He's, he's worked up a nutty demonstration. New York is going to lay its heart at your feet while the whistles blow and the bands play and the cameras grind. How about you, sailor? Anything you care to say as we go into action? Oh, I'm going to have a marvelous time. Whatever happens afterwards, I mean about the convulsions and all that, I'm going to have fun first. I am. I am. Well, if that doesn't make him cry, nothing will. Cry? Why should they cry? Because you're the bravest kid that ever lived. There's no fake about it this time. Oh, look!
Don't excite yourself too much. It's just a fate. What did you say? I said, don't excite yourself too much. It's just a fate. Who? Oh, who's the fate? Those grapplers. The only square thing about them is the ring. Oh, well, them? They're a symbol of the whole town, pretending to fight, love, weep, and laugh all the time, and they're phonies, all of them. And I had the list. Oh, no, you don't. Don't say that. Using you to get a bonus and a byline on the front page. Making good over your poor little pain-racked body. You know, I'm worse than those fake questions. I feel fine tonight, Wally, you and the Morning Star. have been so wonderful to me. You know, these wonderful gowns and the banquets and the theater tickets and the poetry. Stop looking so happy and gallant, will you? It breaks my heart. Okay, boys. Get up! That's what we're here for, to get personal. Proceed. There's a loose halyard for it. Go make it fast, will you? Bring up the yes, my little mariner, yes. Try not to go overboard. I asked several people, but they didn't know. They didn't know what? If, if you were married. The answer in capital letters is no, N-O. N-O? Yeah, N-O. Oh, I see. I don't suppose newspaper men marry as a rule. Not after they're 14 or 50. That's the dangerous age for the journalist. His ideals are not yet formed, and he falls easy prey to elderly waitresses. Once his finer side is born, he, he waits. Boy. So the sound of the fire alarm, Miss Flagg, waits to go rushing off to the fire. What fire is that, Mr. Cook? Love. I used to hear about that in Warsaw. Yeah, it's gotten around. over some celebrity. Danced in the streets with a neon light round its heart. Getting fed up with its trick tears and phony lamentations over you. I'm glad they're phony. It makes everything all right in a way. What I mean is I wouldn't want to feel I was really making all those people suffer. Thank you. 
<laughs> Tonight there is one among us who adds a bit of unaccustomed drama to our little rebel. She sits here, eyes sparkling, her face wreathed in a lovely smile, drinking in the charm, the glitter, the gay sounds <gasps> of life. So drink your wine, laugh and applaud, while this little doomed child sits saying goodbye to you. Her last goodbye, with a grateful smile on her lips. So on with the show, my little actors all. On with the show, for tonight, you are not the famous folk of Broadway. Tonight, you are just a little chorus, laughing and dancing and pirouetting to afford a last brief hour of mirth and jollity to America's simplest and sweetest of heroines, Miss Hazel Flagg. Good, clean fun. There's nothing like a wake. Oh, please, please, let's not talk shop. Our next number tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is entitled The Heroine of History. <laughs> Catherine the Great, who saved Russia. She could do it, too. <laughs> Lady Godiva, who saved her virtue. That's the way those things go, folks. who saved Holland by putting her finger in the dike. Show them the finger, babe. Pocahontas, who saved Captain John Smith, and later on set him up in the cough drop business. I want you to meet that little girl from Warsaw, Vermont. That little soldier whose heroic smile in the face of death has wrung tears and cheers from the great stone heart of the city. I humbly invite her now to take her place beside all the great heroines of history, our own Miss Hazel Flagg. to spare our feelings. We go to press in 15 minutes. Now, 
chance, Doctor? I've been expecting something like this. Let's get her out of here. <gasps> Quick. Please, everybody, take your seat. Now, quiet, please, take your seat. There must be no commotion. The show must go on. Hazel would want it that way. I'm disgusted with you, Hazel. Getting drunk in the middle of a memorial. Now lie down like I tell you. I'm not drunk. I just had a little sip or so, and then, then all those buffaloes ran over me. They weren't buffaloes. They were horses. <laughs> I might have been trampled to death. Don't yell, I tell you. If somebody respectable could see you now, that would be pretty, wouldn't it? Shame on you. <laughs> Take your stockings off. <laughs> yeah, the doctor said them over herself. <laughs> Say, what are you doing? Oh. Three o'clock in the morning. If anything happens, we'll have to replate. Gee, and that's all that counts to you, isn't it, you bird brain, with a headline for a heart? That poor, gallant little kid standing in front of that goofy bunch of horses and smiling, just, just smiling. Don't waste copy on me, Wallace. Oliver, there's the sweetest, loveliest kid in there that ever lived. Yes, you said that before, Wally. I'm through. I can't play pallbearer any longer. I'm resigning. She's all right, gentlemen, sleeping like a little baby. No. Are you sure? Just as if nothing had happened. She'll be fitter than a fiddle in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Just a minute. There are 20 little school children downstairs to sing for you. Mr. Stone arranged for it yesterday. Oh, it's horrible. I go mad. Oh, send them up. You may bring them up, sir. Oh, my gosh, there's a sawmill inside my head. You may leave the room, Miss Rafferty. I brought you something. Raw eggs. Just what you need. The albumin counteracts the alcohol. Suck them right down. Settle your stomach. Go on. I got a whole dozen. Is this the way drunks feel? Hazel, you've got what is known in medicine as a hangover. I've got something worse than that. I've got a conscience. Oh. Keep on sucking that egg and your conscience will go away. I'm ruining him. Let me have your pulse, Hazel. Ah. Don't jiggle me. My pulse is all right. I'm as healthy as a dog. Oh. Well, stop groaning then. You old fraud, you know what I'm groaning about. Oh, I wish, I wish I had radium poisoning or something awful and then, then I wouldn't ruin him. Who's this you're ruining, Hazel? Wallace, Mr. Cook. Oh, him. Have another egg. Enoch, listen, he thinks I've helped him become a great journalist and they're going to give him a bonus. Mr. Mr. Stone is a bonus. It's coming out of the $10,000 they owe me. If I'm not complaining, why should he worry? He thinks I've helped him, helped him, and it makes him feel bad. Oh, I can't stand it. You know what'll happen when they find out I'm a horrible good-for-nothing face? They'll blame him, everybody. They'll just burn down the newspaper and the mayor, he'll have Wally Lynch. You just wait and see. Oh. Enoch, why did you let me come to New York? You were only as honest as you look. Mr. Cook is here to see Miss Flagg. Do you feel able to speak to him? All right. Tell him, wait, wait. Tell him to come in. Come in. Hello, Hazel. Yeah. Hello, Doctor. It, uh, it won't hurt her if I visit a while. She's doing very well for her last few weeks.
Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, Hazel. I was... Uh, we were worried. Excuse me. I wouldn't have disturbed you, but uh, I'm going away, and I thought I might not see you again. Until... You're going away where? Oh, just to Albany. Well, what for? Just to see the governor. Wallace, what are you doing in Albany with the governor? Well, now, Hazel, you mustn't get overwrought. Well, if it's about me, I must know about it. It's uh, about the arrangements, Hazel. What arrangements? For the funeral. What funeral? Yours. Oh. Have I, have I shocked you? Oh, no, oh, no. Everybody has to have a funeral sometime. No, but not like yours, darling. Gee, I meant to keep it as a surprise. Oh, it's better this way. You're telling me in advance so I can get used to it. Oh, I hope it's going to be a little funeral. Oh, I'm afraid that's way, way impossible, Hazel. According to the present registration, there'll be about 30,000 automobiles and a considerable group on foot. About half a million, I think. Oh, my. Well, that's not half enough to mourn for you. Oliver thought we could get the president, but uh, he's still fishing. I arranged to have the symphony orchestra there instead. Well, if it's all arranged, why are you going to open? Well, uh, I had an idea this morning. I'm getting the uh, governor to declare a public holiday for the uh, occasion. Oh, like St. Valentine's Day. I'm glad I told you. Hazel, I want you to know now and always, I think you're magnificent. Oh, gee, please don't say that. Do you have to go away? Well, I'll be back by night. And I've got another surprise for you, but I'll, I'll not tell you now. Oh, I've got to hear it. Well, I... I promised you I wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do what? Call in any other doctor. Hazel, I know you have great faith in Enoch, but I've broken my promise. Dr. Emil Egelhofer is arriving on the Rex this afternoon. He's from Vienna, and I'm bringing him up to see you. What for? Hazel, he is the greatest expert on radium poisoning in the world. I know it's incurable, but when I heard he was on the Rex, I radioed him. There's, there's always an outside chance. You know, just one in a million. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I've got to run to get the 10 o'clock plane. Hazel, I, I know it's a long shot, but we can hope. Hmm? Goodbye. Goodbye. Pardon. The little children are here, Hazel. What little children? They've come to sing for you. Hey, Nick, this is the end. Huh? Don't ask any questions, just listen to me. We're caught. Dr. Eaglehoof is coming here tonight to, to expose me and Wally. You've got nothing to fear from any doctor who comes snooping around here. Better have another egg. Oh, there's only one way out. There's only one way to save you and me and Wally. I've got to commit suicide in advance before that scientist gets to me. I, I've got to be drowned. Oh, suck this egg, I tell oh, you. Oh, shut up. I'll, I'll leave a note to the city thanking everybody. You, you get rid of the nurse for the evening, and then I'll jump into the river. Somebody's bound to see me jump in, and you'll be waiting in a rowboat to fish me out. And I'll swim underwater, and I'll change my name, and, and hide away for the rest of my life, and never, never see him again. Oh, they'll hold the funeral without me. For you, Hazel, we are cheering. Now the end is coming nearing. Like an angel, you're appearing. Who makes for Hazel flag? Gal and Hazel flag, believe us. Your passing will so deeply grieve us. When you have me have to leave.
Hello, honey. This is Ernest. Honey, what kind of flowers do you like? Huh? Don't worry, honey. They're all the same price. I'm getting them wholesale. Be right up, honey. Stop, quick. Who committed suicide? Read it to me. Dear New York City, goodbye. Remember me as someone you made very happy. I have enjoyed everything. There's only one thing left to enjoy. Your river that smiled outside of my window. It is easy to die when the heart is full of gratitude. Hazel Flag. Hello, Oliver. Well, we got our holiday. The governor has agreed to allow that. Jumping H. Sebastian. She's double-crossed it. Where? It's Flag. She's gone over to some other paper? She's gone into the river. Listen, you weasel brain. What are you trying to tell me? Hazel Flag has committed suicide. I don't believe it. Ernest, your sultan found her suicide note. He saw her leave the hotel five minutes ago. Give me the mayor at once. Get the governor. Tell him we want that holiday tomorrow. You're a fine pair of grave diggers. You and the governor both. Hello, hello, mayor. This is Wallace Cook of the Star calling. The fine, sweet trick you tried to play. Well, why didn't you say it over me? Jumping off up here like some hophead. I didn't jump, I was pushed. Scaring everybody out of their wits. No, boy, I'm a Listen, either you give me your word of honor you won't try that again or I'll spank you a little. Wallace, don't you think you ought to notify him that you've located me? You know, it seems unfair to have dragging the river. Oh, the fresh air will do him good. Come on, I want to talk to you. Well, why? This is as good a place as any. Get in. Oh, I... It's awfully cozy, isn't it? I, are you still mad at me? I'm mad at myself, drooling away to you about the funeral. That's what drove you to it. Well, to be really frank with you, Wallace, it wasn't that at all. Oh, darling, I'd love to sit in here with you for the rest of my life. Hazel, will you marry me? What? You heard me. Will you marry me? Oh, Wallace. Come on, answer me. Oh, but, darling, there's no future in it. Now, don't talk like a half-wit. I don't care about the future. Oh, well, if things are normal, I... Oh, well, I... I mustn't. Don't ask me. Please just kiss me once more and let it go with that without, without ruining your life. 
Mister. So what the devil is there better to life than we've got? A handful of perfect hours. That that's all the luckiest ever get out of it. Just a handful of hours to save and remember. And then I'll be there at the end, sailor. I'll be there waving you goodbye. It'll be the same as if you and I'd lived forever. And you will grow old in my heart. Okay, sir. You seen anything of a young lady that jumped in the river? Yes, she, she's right here. All right. Jim, get the bull motor. Oh, no, never mind the bull motor. No, her breathing's fine. Just drive us to her hotel, will you? Sure, jump in. Jump in, Jim. Oh, oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. Well, looks as if I finally get my ride on a fire engine. <laughs> yeah. Young Ben Yim. Ben Yim? Yim. Yeah. Okay, Yim! <laughs> having a cat fit. You know, I've been misjudging him. When I told him you were safe and sound, he, he choked up and he couldn't talk for a minute. Oh, I guess he's very sweet. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Have a good sleep. Good night. Yes, sir. Oh, it's a big fire. Oh, if you ever hate me, remember this and this and this and this and... The biggest fire since Rome. Well, well, well. Hello, Azor. Come in. I was wondering what ever become of you. <laughs> Enoch, who is that man? Enoch, who is that eh? man? Oh. He's just a stranger from Europe, dropped in for a little chat. We've been discussing medicine, pro and con. Well, excuse me. I want to introduce you to Hazel Flagg. Mr. Uh, what did you say your name was? Egelhofer. Dr. Emil Egelhofer. Dr. Offelegger? Seems to me I've heard of you somewhere, Doctor. Wait a minute, Enoch, sit down now. I received a radio on the ship from the Morning Star, Miss Flagg, which excited my professional as well as humane interests. And I called on you at once. Ah, that must be my colleagues. Good night, gentlemen. This is the young lady, Miss Hazel Flagg, Dr. Oswald Funsch of Prague, Dr. Felix Marachowski of Moskau. Dr. Friedrich Kirchenweiser of Berlin. All the darkies am a weeping a massage in the cool, cool ground. There is no vestige, no trace, no single symptom of radium poisoning in this young woman, Mr. Stone. We had some trouble with that horse doctor from Vermont. But we took the x-rays regardless. Are you sure you examined the right woman? And not some... some imposter? Oh, the only imposter in this case, Mr. Stone, is this young woman we examined. The young woman who is known as Hazel Flagg. Here's a full report of this examination. Here's the X-ray pictures showing the entire skeleton of this young woman known as Hazel Flagg. And here, Mr. Stone, is my bill. 
uh, our bill. And I will assure you, not me or my colleagues will say one single word of this to the newspaper. Goodbye. You have nothing more to worry about, Mr. Stone. Your troubles are over. Send me a force from the circulation department. Got a bullet in the new lead for you on Hazel Flag that's gonna read that sour puss of yours into a nosegay of smiles. So sit tight and tuck in your ears. Miss Flag is getting married tonight. And wish me luck, old weasel brain. Now listen, I know it sounds hysterical, marrying somebody with a few weeks to, to live. Like honeymooning with a hearse at the front door. But Oliver, it's on the square. What's the matter with you? Listen, I want you to be best man up. Are you stewed or something? I came in for congratulation. What's up? What's eating you? I am sitting here, Mr. Cook, trying to figure some way out of the blackest disaster that has ever struck down an innocent man since the days of Judas Iscariot. What are you mumbling about? What disaster? I am sitting here, Mr. Cook, toying with the idea of removing your heart and stuffing it like an olive. Hang on, Oliver, you're going screwy. I'll get Watson. You ruined me. You ruined the Morning Star. You blackened forever the fair name of journalism. You and that foul botch of nature, Hazel Flagg. You got some excuse for those words, Oliver. Let's have it quick. Excuse? Excuse? Look at that! Look at that skeleton. Not a bone missing. Down to the last healthy vertebrae. Intact. Read that. Rub your nose in it. That's Hazel Flagg, the biggest fake of the century. A lying, faking witch with the soul of an eel and the brain of a tarantula. She hasn't got anything wrong with her at all. Sweet heaven, I can't believe it. It's like some miracle. Get to the Waldorf Hotel as quick as you can. Grab Hazel Flagg and bring her to this office. If you have to drag her through the street by the hair. So help me, Oliver. If you hurt that kid, I'll knock you cold. I'll bring you. You stay here and watch that maniac. Watch every move he makes. I want Hazel Flagg in this office within half an hour. You're staying here. Listen, Oliver, you're not going to hurt her. Shut up. I'm marrying her. Get that into that monkey skull of yours. I don't care how we've been taking or what she's done, I'm in love with her. Oh, that's a beautiful thought. And I thank God on my knees that she's a fraud and a fake and isn't going to die. You're on your knees thanking God, are you, when the whole town's getting ready to laugh at us? A howl that'll be heard around the world. Let him laugh. I'll do my own laughing back. It'll be worse than the French Revolution. Yeah, I hope I'm here when it breaks. I want to make one speech to our dear readers before they carry our heads off on a pike. I want to tell them we've been their benefactors. We gave them a chance to pretend that their phony hearts were dripping with the milk of human kindness. What's your name? Who, me? Max. I want quiet in this office, Max. <laughs> quiet so I can think. The Hazel Flag's a fraud, eh? Dang him! So when you start yelling foul, remember she was just a circulation stunt for you. You used her like you've used every broken heart that's fallen into your knapsack to inflame the daffy public and help sell your papers. That's enough about selling papers. Oh, there we go. There we go. Go like me. Oh, come Max. On. Before I finish with that female Dracula, she'll know one thing, that Oliver Stone is worse than radium poisoning four ways from the jet. Hello? Hello? Who? Mo? Mo who? Who's Mo Levinsky? That's my brother. You saw over to get that girl, remember? Uh-oh, uh, Mo, listen. What? What's that? Well, what are you stalling for? Get her back here to the office as I ordered. Get the mush out of your mouth, man, and speak up. He's a dumb cluck, Mr. Stone. You better let me talk to him. You'll just get him excited, then he's gone. <laughs> Hello, Mo. This is Max. What's on your mind? Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. That's a shame. What is it? I'm getting it. Go on, Mo. And take it easy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You don't say. Look, Mo, hold the wire, will you? I'll take it up with Mr. Stone. Well? He wants to know where he can get a doctor. This girl is sick. Who's sick? This girl, Hazel Flagg. It's a lie. Listen, Max, ask him what she's sick with. He told me. He said it's something like the DTs. Only the dope can't pronounce it. Well, is the nurse there? Just a minute. Hello, Mo. Hello, Mo. This is Max. Your brother, Max. He's getting rattled. Now, don't fly off the handle, Mo. All I want to know is the noise there. No, not a noise. The noise, like a tootsie. That's right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Give me that phone. I'm getting it. Give me that phone, I tell you. Here's the noise. Miss Rafferty, Oliver Stone. Pneumonia? It's a lie, I tell you. Temperature of 106? Dying? Go back and take her temperature again. I don't trust that girl until I get a doctor. No, not Dr. Downer. Tell Mo to throw that Vermont quack out of the room the minute he shows his face. Get me, Mo. Pneumonia. It's the finger of God, if it's true. Listen, Mo. Don't let anybody leave that room until I get there. Dead or alive, nobody leaves that room. Get me? It's like a pardon from the gallows. But I'm trusting nobody this time. I'm taking no chances. Hello. Hello. Get me Dr. Emil Egelhofer of Vienna. Wherever he is. Well, try all the hotels. Listen, Oliver, I'm going over there. And if you try to stop me, so help me, I'll get you if it takes all my life. Nobody is going to stop you now. If that little girl is sick, your place is by her side. <laughs> yes, Dr. Emil Egelhofer of Vienna. Well, try the medical center. Try Schultz's beer garden. No, I don't want to see the man. Take the man away from me. I want Wallace. Wallace, where are you? Cut out the shenanigans, will you? We haven't got any time to lose. Oh, Wally. Wally, I'm on fire. Wally. Now, shut up for a minute and listen to me. Egelhofer's going to be here in 10 or 15 minutes. Egelhofer. Dr. Emil Egelhofer of Vienna. Oh. I knew you were faking the minute oh, Wally, I... they were going to arrest me. I couldn't get away. You know, I put the thermometer under the hot water and threw a fit. Oh, Wally, you hate me. I knew you'd hate me. I told you, I told you. Let's not go into that now. Oh, Egelhofer, you'll expose me again. There's four of them. Now keep your head and listen to me. Oh, you hate me. Now shut up. Where's the hot water? It's in there. As if I didn't know. Have we got two thermometers? Three, I've got three. Two are enough. You'll never forgive me for what I've done to you. Oh, Wally, I want to die. Honest, I don't want to live another minute. Must have been a lot of fun playing me for the world's prized chump. Where's the other thermometer? Yeah. Wallace Cook, king of the boobs. The only genuine horse's neck on the market. I didn't mean it, really. I didn't All right, shut up and listen to the greatest sucker in Christendom and listen hard. Egelhofer is coming. With his gang? What gang? Well, oh, he's got a wagon load of scientists with him with, you know, microscopes and searchlight. Oh, I'm sunk. I give up. Get out of bed. No, no, let them arrest me and put me in prison. You won't hate me so much if I'm behind bars. Listen, my dying swan, this is no time to stop faking. Ouch. You're going to have pneumonia and you're going to have it good. Well, you want me to stand in front of a window and catch cold? No, oh, that would take too long. You've got to raise your pulse to 160, quick. You've got to have your gasping, panting, and covered with a cold sweat inside of five minutes. How? Oh, I don't... Fight, fight. Come on, come on, Delilah. Up with your dukes. Oh, I can't. I'm sick of faking and lying. Take that ice pack off your head and fight. No, no, what's the use? Why fool them any longer? Because I love you. Because I'm going to marry you. And I don't want to spend my honeymoon hanging around Sing Sing blowing kisses to you in the exercise yard. Come on, stop dogging it. You've got to be bathed in perspiration. Come on, get going, you little crook. Who's a crook? You and your talking newspaper. What's up, baby? <laughs> Come on, keep moving, snake brains. Come I'll on. I'll kill you. Bagging at me like I ran like I was a prize pig with a blue ribbon. Oh, on. blue ribbon's on you, baby. Just a big yellow sign marked fake. Huh? I'm a fake, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm a fake. What are you and that phony Santa Claus out of a stone slobbering and drooling over me? That's for the heroines of history. Mm -hmm. And that's for your Aunt Mary. Ah! 
Come on, keep moving, my little frog. Never forgive you. Come as long on. as I'm little, I won't. I just hate you. I just hate you. That's it. Uh, let go of me. Let go of me. Oh, I hate you. You're going to have plenty of reason to hate me. I'm going to show you cards and spades and lying for the next 50 years. I'm going to pay you back for every lie you told. I'm going to flirt and lie and cheat and swindle right through to our golden wedding. Yeah, yeah, let me hit you just once. All right, come on. That's it. Come on, keep coming. Faster, faster. Come on, keep coming. Faster, faster. That's it. Keep swinging. That's the girl. That's it. What's the matter? Come on. Oh, oh I'm getting dizzy. Well, yeah. oh, that's fine. That's fine. Now, listen to me and listen carefully. When you come to, I want you to remember what I'm what saying. What do you mean, come to? I mean, when you regain consciousness, I want you to switch thermometers. Put the hot one in your mouth, you get me? Yeah, yeah. Let me suck you just once. Just once on the jaw, and I don't care what happens. All right, come on. Whoa. I just heard the elevator door. They're coming. Don't forget about the thermometer. Yeah, yeah. All right, say goodnight to Papa now. Well, what are you going to do? You put up a nice fight, Wally. You mean to say you saw the whole thing? From the beginning, Mr. Cook. You mean to say you stood there and let me beat up a defenseless woman? I did, Mr. Cook. Where's your sense of chivalry? My chivalry? Aren't you just a trifle confused, Mr. Cook? You hit her. That's entirely different. I love her. <laughs> Water. Water. I'm a fire. I'm hot. Well, you can cool off now, Hazel. Uh, the jig is up. What? What? The jig is up. You mean to say the whole thing was, was, for, was for nothing? Yeah, I'm sorry. Jeff. You thought you could put one over on Oliver Stone, eh? Well, I guess I'd still know a fate. Will you I keep out of this? Wally. Yes, dear? <laughs> Oh, oh, Wally, why, I didn't mean to do it, I didn't mean to do it, I, I love you, I love you. Miss Flagg, I wonder if you are aware of the traditions of a great newspaper. Do you realize what it means to those who carry aloft the torch of journalism? From the highest editor to the lowest office boy, the lifeblood of a newspaper, Miss Flagg, is its integrity. Am I right, Wally? Word for word. I wrote that speech for you ten years ago at the Cleveland Convention, you remember? You both talk all you want. I've made up my mind. You're what? I'm through. What do you mean, you're through? I'm going to confess. I'm going back to Warsaw. They love me there. They don't hit me on the jaw and push me in rivers. And... But you can't confess. Do you realize that out there are some of the most important citizens of this town? All of those people are out there by special invitation from the Morning Star. And why? To pass on to the people of New York to the people of the world, your last words. For instance. Now, this is no time for sarcasm, Wally. You got me into this, you get me out. Use your brain. Mine's stunned. Where's Dr. Downer? Where's that weasel-hearted medico? He's been on a toot. We could use him. We could throw him to the wolves. Just when we need him, he isn't here. I got an idea. We can bury her, like they do in India. You know, like the yogis. We can stick a tube down for her to breathe through and dig her up in the morning with no harm done. You do it! You let me out of here! Wally, stop her! Stop her! I'm a... Stop her! I'm a fool! I'm a fool! I'm a fool! I'm a fake! I'm a fool! I'm not gonna die! I was never gonna die! I never had radio Boise! I never had anything! I wanted a trip to New York and I got it! And what's more, you in New York can go... Try! Mr. Stone, is this true? Yes. Well, this is terrible, terrible. I endorse this thing. I sponsored this girl. I gave her the key to the city. 
Uh, and just as an election was coming up. Here's your key. I won't be needing it anymore. Miss Flack, I represent 100,000 young matrons. We switched the whole study course from the menace of communism to the inspiration of Hazel Flagg. Miss Flagg, the girlfriends of the forest have just organized a Hazel Flagg unit with me as chief ranger. Already we have 4,000 members. If you persist in flaunting your recovery in this flagrant manner, the trees of America will be without girlfriends. Ladies and gentlemen, the Morning Star keeps faith with its readers. This thing must not get out. Oh, let me alone. I wish I really could die. Go someplace by myself and, and die alone like an elephant. <laughs> Happy, Mr. Cook. Ecstatic, Mrs. Cook. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. You think I'm Hazel Flagg. Well, I'm getting sick and tired of people mistaking me for that fake. Fake? Young woman, how dare you speak of Hazel Flagg as a fake? How dare you slur the memory of one of the most gallant girls that ever lived? Despite you and your kind, the world will never forget Hazel Flagg. That's what I'm afraid of. Don't worry, baby. Two months from now, they won't know who Hazel Flagg was. They'll find another elephant. Darling, you're forgetting that everybody in New York knew me and loved me. Loved me for my courage, my brave smile in the face of... Well, after all, I was a pretty important person. Just a flash in the pan of Manhattan. And they were beginning to get pretty impatient at the way you were dragging this thing out. That's a lie, and you know it. Why, right now, millions of people are crying just thinking about me. Why don't you get wise to yourself, Hazel? You were just another freak, like the bearded lady, uh, Jojo the dog face. Take boy. that back off. Ah, 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 ah. Hazel! Hazel! Yes, Enoch! What is it? Hazel! Hazel! Run for your life! Run for your life! The hotel is flooded. Flooded. Mm -hmm. 